can diet help reduce my risk of Alzheimer's, which my mom has? So they specifically have it in their family, but I think just in general, can that help? Well, absolutely. Uh, this is such a huge and important question. Uh, Alzheimer's, another one of those diseases that's not supposed to happen. I mean, clogged arteries aren't supposed to happen, and inflamed colons from colitis, it's not supposed to happen. And whatever Alzheimer's is, um, the, clearly it's a vascular disease. When we look at the arteries of people with Alzheimer's uh, after death, we see how thickened they are and uh, uh, how unhealthy the arteries are compared to people without Alzheimer's. But there's so many other changes within the nerve tissue, all the tangles and the aluminum deposits, and there's a, there's a, a battle being fought. Uh, in the brain tissues, clearly, uh, uh, the people with this condition. And yet many, most, uh, we would hope, people make it to advance, who make it to advanced age don't get Alzheimer's. Uh, and, and we all know people who, who at age 100 are clear and bright and reading the morning paper. And uh, so it's certainly not an inevitable process, not part of aging. It's a disease. And like most other diseases uh, where our atherosclerotic plaques are really artery abuse from what the person is running through those arteries meal after meal. And the colon wall is bloody and, and inflamed from colitis is complaining about the food that the odor of the colon is smearing on the inside of that lining. Well, surely the brain of the Alzheimer's patient with this inflammatory fire burning in the tissues is that there's a reason the, the, these dreadful pathologic changes are happening. And it's probably not a virus or it's probably not cosmic rays. It's probably what the person's eating and running through their brain three times a day um, in, the, in the form of the nutrients in the food. And when you think about uh, some 80-year-old person who clearly has Alzheimer's dementia, what have they been eating for the last 50, 60, 70 years in, in 20th century America? Um, uh, you know, you can, uh, can put a sizable bet down <clears throat> that the meal, that the daily meals were full of cooked meats, uh, and the very act of cooking meat, uh, of, of roasting that chicken breast or grilling a steak, that the heat oxidizes the cholesterol in the muscle of the animal that's being eaten. And the oxidized cholesterol that's had its electrons ripped off is apparently very damaging to the brain. Uh, and uh, in fact, we find that um, uh, ghee uh, that in, used in Indian cooking is full of oxidized cholesterol. One reason that uh, heart disease may be, and dementia might be so common in India. But uh, between the cooked meats, uh, and the uh, oxidized vegetable oils that they, they fry foods in. And these dreadful uh, molecules called advanced glycation end products. Um, the, when people consume sugars, when they drink those colas, when they eat those baked goods, and the sugar washes their tissues, sticks to proteins all over the body, especially in the brain. And when they look at the brains of people who've died from Alzheimer's and they do special stains for these advanced glycation end products, um, their brains are filled with them. So you can imagine the sugar these people were eating and the meats they were eating and, the, and what they weren't eating, all those salads and vegetables that might have protected them uh, from the damage the free radicals would produce in their brain. Um, you can pretty much predict the, or I guess you can't predate, you look at, back through the retrospectoscope, what those people were eating to create a brain like this. So uh, I guess you can tell I'm a big believer that, that Alzheimer's is largely, given all the people who don't develop it, and when you look at the blue zones where people live to be 100 years old, you see these centenarians out working in their garden. Uh, they're out in the sunshine doing physical work, eating a plant-based diet. There's no reason they, their brain should start on fire with this inflammatory uh, detrimental process. Uh, so I would uh, urge people uh, to have some confidence. There's no guarantee in life. And none of us ate very healthfully in our early years, I'm sure. And seeds of disease have been planted, I'm sure. 
but it doesn't matter. Meal after meal is your medicine, and, and every salad is medicine for your brain. Every bowl of vegetable soup is medicine for your neurons, for your arteries, your brain. You just keep eating that whole food plant-based diet, and you know, at least you'll know you've done all that you can do nutritionally uh, to reduce your chances of, uh, of that dreadful condition. And so uh, go and take a walk every day, get that oxygenated blood flowing through your arteries, minimize the stress so you don't have lots of cortisol floating around in your blood, get enough sleep that's so important in protecting your brain. Don't drink alcohol for any reason. Uh, and, uh, and get as much love in your life as you can. Uh, and uh, uh, those, I think, are the uh, uh, keys to uh, uh, happy senior years without Alzheimer's and being able to remember where you put your car keys. Hi, everyone. Dr. Michael Clapper here announcing our new format for our Q&A with Dr. K. Each day, Annie Hagen will be asking me one question that's been sent in by our viewers. So if you want to see if your question is getting answered, do join us for our daily Q&A with Dr. K right here. Hope to see you then.